What's up, people? This is Nature Girl 30 here, and I'm giving you a SmackDown review for February 10th. Now, I'm going to be honest. This was a really good SmackDown. I really did enjoy myself a lot because four of my favorite wrestlers were in the ring at the beginning of the entire SmackDown. I'm talking about Wade Barrett, Cody Rhodes, Sheamus, and The Big Show. Cody Rhodes. They, each of them actually talked about, you know, how they're going to win the Elimination Chamber, except for The Big Show. He came out saying, you know, I'm not going to promote it. I'm actually going to say that th this was going to be... That that match with me and you, Sheamus, of course, is going to be probably one of the great WrestleMania matches ever. And I'm not going to lie. I would love to actually see the Big Show versus Sheamus. I really do want to see that match. Having Sheamus in there with like a big guy versus little guy style kind of match is going to be great. Because even though Sheamus is a big dude, I don't think he's ever fought a giant before. So that's actually going to be an interesting match to see. I would love to see Cody Rhodes finally achieve his goal as being a dual champion. I would love to see that, truly, because that has not happened in 20 years. He is trying to achieve the feat that the Ultimate Warrior achieved 20 years ago. And I would love to see him do that. I really would. Seeing him as the IC champion and the World Heavyweight champion going to WrestleMania and facing Sheamus, that would be awesome. That really would be. But then there's also another match that I would love to see. Wade Barrett versus Sheamus. I really would love to see that because their styles are so unique, let alone uh, they're pretty much the same and unique at the same time. Like, um, the, like uh, the Wade Barrett has a classic brawler, like like a classic Buckingham brawler style. You know, I love his style of fighting. I love Sheamus' style of fighting, just straight up in your face. That will be a great match to see. They have really great chemistry in the ring, and I would love to see that as a WrestleMania. So I was really torn. I love all four of these guys. And then having it as one of the matches of the night was even a crowning a, a crowning moment for me. I, I love to see that because that was a great tag match with the Big Show versus Shea, Big Show and Sheamus versus Wade Barrett and, and Cody Rhodes. Even though my boy uh, Cody Rhodes got beat, I have to say, my hat, my, my hat, my imaginary hat goes off to the Big Show. For actually allowing Sheamus to be put over. And instead of him having like to, to actually have the victory, he literally backed off and he allowed Sheamus to get the win. Mad respect right there. Mad respect to the Big Show. The match was great. I really did like it. I have a huge amount of respect for the Big Show for allowing Sheamus to get the win. Now, moving on from there, honestly, I'm really getting sick of Oksana. Like, seriously, I'm sick of her being a penis warmer. For crying out loud, you're a diva. Act like it. But unfortunately... All the Divas right now are penis warmers, except for Beth Phoenix and Tamita, I mean, <laughs> and um, and Karma. They're the only ones that aren't penis warmers. Everybody else are penis warmers. But forget the whole penis thing. I actually did like Beth Phoenix's little moment that she had with Tamina in the ring. It's actually promoting, I don't think it's going to promote a rivalry. I think it's going to promote an alliance. And I would love to see an alliance with her and Karma um, come together because they will be a very dominating faction and they will do something with the divas division because the divas division is floundering right now it really really is and speaking of divas aj's little moment good grief don't get me wrong it it was boring starting off but the fact is that she's supposed to be selling an injury she was moving her neck at least four or five times i'm like dude if you have a neck brace on the whole purpose of the neck brace is for you to not move your neck. Stop turning your head. Literally, stop turning your head. You're supposed to be selling an injury. But it wasn't so much that. Because that moment really did kind of was, was dull and stupid and insignificant. But when Michael Cole got in the ring and he was actually talking to AJ, my goodness, that was probably one of the, one of the best hill moments I've ever seen him be in. Like, ever. Michael Cole literally became a heel commentator, finally. It's just he was doing it for the wrong person. Like, Daniel Bryan is a full-fledged heel now. You're supposed to be saying good, good stuff about Daniel Bryan. You're supposed to be on his side. You're not supposed to literally be all in AJ's face. You're supposed to be saying some great stuff about him, how he's misunderstood. But no, he did not. But the fact of the matter is, everything that he said uh, about AJ was true. That's pretty much what we're seeing. We all know that Dan Bryan is setting her up, especially the forehead kiss. Ladies, you know what a forehead kiss is. You know what it means. The forehead kiss is probably the ultimate insult of any woman on the planet. 
Yes, sometimes it can be affectionate, but that's when that's when you're with your man for like several years and you know what that kiss means. If you're just dating a guy and he gives you a forehead kiss, yes, that's an insult. We all know where it's going. But anyway, Daniel Bryan is probably one of the first ever wrestlers that I've ever encountered that literally sucks the energy out of the room when he's on the mic. Absolutely, positively, no energy at all. Don't get me wrong. He is great as a wrestler, but at, on the mic, he will suck the energy out of the room. Man, I fell asleep watching that segment. I had to go back and watch SmackDown again after he started talking on the mic. He's probably one of the only wrestlers ever that can do that. But on the rail, I'll go, I'll, I'll move on with him when I talk about the main event. But... Honestly, another thing that still consistently pisses me off is the whole farting Natalia segment. What is up with that? It's demeaning. It's downgrading her. Stop doing it, okay? It's not funny. I know little kids think that farts are funny, but not at the expense of an adult's career. Move on from that, please. And enough with the fart machine already. And as for Oksana, I'm tired of her being a penis warmer on my screen, okay? Yes, you are... Com you Ugh, the fact that you are flirting and banging a guy that's old enough to be your dad should literally be behind closed doors. We don't want to know, okay? I don't want to know what you do with him. I don't want to even see you try to nibble at his ear. Leave it alone. Stop being a penis warmer and start being a diva, please. Okay, moving on from that insignificant monstrosity. I'm actually going to go on to two matches that, in my opinion, were forgettable. And I'm talking about the first one was the Great Khali versus Jinder Mahal. Now, they were trying to bring back an old feud that pretty much ended and started all with Jinder Mahal before the Great Khali left. Now, it didn't really do anything for either wrestler. Honestly, it didn't. We knew the Great Khali would dominate Jinder Mahal because the Great Khali is now a face, but it didn't do anything for Jinder Mahal. So, being even though you're making a comeback, you want to be with a wrestler that's actually going to be up your caliber, that's going to be at either the same caliber as you, or actually be an upgrade from you. So it will not only give you the airtime you deserve, but even if you lose, you'll still have, I mean, you'll still get something out of it. The Great Khali got nothing out of this match, and neither did, did Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal hasn't gotten any love since he got back, and he's been buried in every match he's been in. So why in the world would this do any good? For Jinder Mahal, it didn't. It completely. It, he didn't even. He doesn't even have enough clout to put anybody over. So, it didn't do anybody any good. That match shouldn't have even happened. It really shouldn't have happened. It wasn't beefed up. Seriously, it should have ended where it stood. Moving on from there, Teddy Biasi versus um, Honigo. Now, what? Like seriously, that match probably lasted at least two minutes. It wasn't a long match at all. Not to mention the fact that, yes, they're trying to build up a few, but Camacho is starting to become a, a waste of space. He comes out there on this three-wheeler, bringing him down to the ring, but he's a neutral. He does nothing. He doesn't even interfere in the match. He hasn't even been in his own tag match yet. He's becoming a waste of space. He's not even a manager. Dude, why are you even there? I mean, I know that's your muchacho, but for crying out loud, have Camacho do something. I don't know, interfere, um, knock somebody down, do something. Stop being a neutral. Ugh, those are two matches that were completely insignificant for me and completely just took me out of the whole thing. But anyway, moving on from there to the main event of the night. I love this match. Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. I loved it because finally, finally, we see... Daniel Bryan as the, the as the aggressive wrestler that he was supposed to be. Finally, we are seeing him in that light. And he literally had to dumb it down for Randy Orton. You can kind of tell that he couldn't be too aggressive with Randy Orton because Randy Orton was going to probably complain that I'm going to get hurt and my neck is broken. But all in all, it was still a good match because he actually did bring out some of the aggression. He didn't completely dumb himself down, which really did make me happy. But the one thing that really pissed me off, really, really freaking pissed me off, was the fact that Randy Orton had to keep people in check during his matches. Dude, it's scripted. You're going to win anyway. Roll with the punches here. You don't have to keep the Big Show in check because the Big Show cannot get down. 
And besides all that, if it wasn't scripted, and if it wasn't written on a piece of paper that he was supposed to win, Dan Bryan would take him out in a heartbeat. If it was a match that lasted probably roughly six or eight minutes, Dan Bryan would take Randy Orton out in a heartbeat. Randy Orton would literally have to step up his game to beat him. And it would probably have to take probably two or three times. And the Big Show? No way. One punch in the face, he's down. So if it wasn't for the fact that a little piece of paper called a script was saving Randy Orton, Randy Orton would not, would not even be significant in the WWE Universe. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't even be noticed. So, big ups to the script, because without that script, Randy Orton would be like, he would be nothing. Let's put it that way. He would be absolutely, positively nothing, because he would lose every match between those two every single night if they had to fight. And another thing, I'm really getting tired of Daniel Bryan talking about him being a vegan. Dude, that is bringing down your character. Stop, okay? It is great that you're a vegan. It is great that you're taking care of your body. I'm a carny for life, and I'll be a carny for life, okay? Stop. Stop being the environmental zealot, and stop being the 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 contender for all vegans. Please stop. It's really dumbing down your character. Okay? But anyway, this was a really good SmackDown. I really did enjoy some of the matches. Yes, there were two matches that I really considered insignificant. The fighting Natalia thing really does get on my nerves. And also the fact that the Divas are nothing but penis warmers except for three. Yeah, is annoying me. But honestly, I have to give it a solid B-. minus. Now, if it wasn't for those two matches with Hunico and Epic, uh, with uh, with um, with Hunico versus Teddy Biasi and the Great Khali versus Jinder Mahal, this would probably be a solid B. But for those two matches to actually bring it down a little, I got I gotta give it a B minus. That's my verdict, and I'm sticking to it. Um, for all those that want to comment, if you like what I'm saying or if you disagree with what I'm saying, please leave a comment below. If you want to leave a video response, I am all for those two. So by all means, leave a video response. I want to hear what you guys say about this. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out, y'all. See you later.